Chapter 66 The Uber raced down the deserted A41. Despite being only seven miles, the journey back to her parents' house could sometimes take over an hour. But tonight it went in an instant. Or maybe it didn't. Isla was in a blur, only snapping to as she recognised the familiar magic roundabout on the edge of Hemel's town centre. For a change, she felt no sense of dread at the prospect of going home. There was nobody there to upset because there was nobody there. Although her mum was still alive, Isla had already started grieving for both of her parents. She knew that her mum was never coming home. As the taxi pulled up to her family home, Isla stopped. She couldn't go in. Her mum was hours from dying. Although she had nowhere to go, she also had no sanitizer or anything to stop her from picking up the virus herself. She asked the driver to take her to the 24-hour Tesco up at Jarman's Park. Despite her sense of helplessness, at least she held on to the desire to be alive. The driver waited outside without question, aware that something serious had happened to his fare. You don't pick up somebody from a hospital in that state, especially now, and expect them to be okay. And the chances of her getting another cab from this wasteland of activity were slim. Isla came out, clutching a bag of essential things to make her safe. The shop was out of hand sanitizer, so she'd gone overboard on alternatives that would probably make her skin bleed, but it was better than using nothing. She had plastic gloves and an improvised face mask made from a woolen scarf left in the clothing department's bargain bin. She could then use cotton wool pads as an extra barrier. The car returned to the house and tentatively, with a sense of disbelief, she walked through the front door. Her home felt contaminated. The television was on. It was always on when her parents were at home, but in their rush to get to the hospital, her dad had not switched it off. Nor had he finished the half-drunk cup of tea sat on the table next to what had been his chair. The table next to where her mother would have been sat was now turned on its side. A broken glass of what looked like water smashed across the surrounding floor. This is where they had last been in the house before they'd left for the hospital. The room told their story. She broke down. Nobody could hear her cries. She lay on the carpet, the bags from Tesco next to her, and as the emotion took a firm grip, Isla looked at her father's chair. Without wanting to, she fell asleep. It can't have been too long before Isla was woken by the sound of her phone. She had no idea where she was or why she was lying on a carpet with a scarf round her mouth. It was a Watford number. The reality dawned. Her mum was gone. It was less of an emotional flood and more of a tsunami. Hello, Isla here. Isla, this is Sister Siobhan. I wanted to let you know immediately that your mum has just passed. I'm very sorry. Can we do anything for you? It was four in the morning and in the space of eight hours, Isla had gone from living with a partner in London and having two parents happily approaching retirement together to being a single middle-aged orphan. Thank you for letting me know, sister. What else was there to say?